everybody. Welcome back. Sport Federation TV. This is, of course, the show that talks about sport in the province across the six districts. I don't need to remind you anymore which the six districts are, but, of course, um, we do focus on our uh, federations, our administrators, our coaches, our athletes, and, of course, many of the athletes at the moment so proudly going to the national tournaments wearing the emblem, the provincial emblem. You can actually see it on my shirt over here now. Right, so if you um, have been following the program, you will know that we talk about the sports structures. Of course, one of the biggest globally most popular sport codes that there is is baseball. We haven't had baseball on TV for a while, and uh, we thought we would get a hold of the president of Cape Town Baseball, Romeo Adams. He joins me on the line now. Romeo, welcome to Sport Federation TV. Good morning, JP and, and the viewers, and thank you for inviting us. Thanks, Romeo. Yeah, welcome. Um, wow. Okay, so let's just start off right at the beginning before I even start talking to you about Cape Town Baseball. That is one of the most incredible backgrounds that I've seen on TV with us in a very long time. That looks quite amazing. Thank you. You've got to, you've got to tell me what you, what you got there. I've got baseballs and I've got hard hats and caps and everything. Yeah, yeah, JP, I've, I've actually made sure that we only look at the baseball uh, uh, memorabilia that I have available here today. Um, I have quite a few other, other sporting memorabilia, whether it's rugby or whether it's football. So these are actually equipment that I still use these days playing in the Masters games. Uh, you'll see the helmet there, the few bats. I, I, I wonder whether I still need one of those bats because I can't seem to get a hit these days. And, and then the cleats at the back. And then in the picture frame, you'll see they're just general, general sporting, uh, sporting codes that's being promoted there. So, so I thought it may may have been necessary and appropriate for that background. And oh, it's not, fantastic. it's not a background on the virtual platform. Yes. It's the actual equipment that yes. that you see there that's being used. Yeah. So this is great. So this is not done on a green screen. But let's start off with talking about some of the what we're looking at there. That's of course very specific baseball equipment. You've got a baseball helmet. I see some baseball shoes. Uh, there's a baseball glove. Of course, those are that's not that's you like for example the shoes. Those are specifically made for baseball. Yeah, it's it's referred to as cleats. So it's it's part of the baseball baseball equipment that a baseball player uses. Um, some of our some of our colleagues and our, our sporting colleagues who play baseball are unfortunately not able to purchase the actual cleats. So they would then play in either rugby boots or soccer boots, sometimes in in hockey hockey footwear too. But the cleats would be would be one of the one of the set of equipment that a baseball player would have to play uh, baseball because if you know the field. And I would set up, there would be a bit of gravel, there would be a bit of grass, and, and the cleats assist in the mobility of the player on the field. Now, one of the things I've often wondered is, why do they give you baseball helmets that is only a half a helmet? Well, when you say a half a helmet, the half a part usually faces the pitcher. And, and it's intended to protect uh, from, from the neck upwards, the, the batter. Um, because some of some of the guys can throw quite hard and quite quick. Um, um, some of us as batsmen, as batters, uh, we only swing once the ball's already in the middle of, of the catcher. That's how quick some of, some of the pitches are. So talking about pitches, I mean, that's one of the things, of course, there's two things in, two things in baseball that we, we see always get highlighted in the highlight clips. The one is, of course, the big hits that goes for a home run. But the other thing is the speed of which some of these pitchers are throwing the ball at. Um, those are they, they measure them with the speed guns and that. Do we have some big speed pitchers in Cape Town? Well, JP, there's quite a bit of talent in, 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 in the Cape Town baseball fraternity. I went to a game, a friendly game, a few weeks ago. I think it was two or three weeks ago, where two major league teams were playing. And, and the speed of those pitchers were, the, were just, it, it was just wonderful to see. Uh, firstly, them back on the field again, but that they've looked after their arms and they are still able to to do that type. Of thing. And and I would think it would be 85 plus, 90 plus even in in some cases. Um, I I'm also aware of the fact that baseball South Africa has been very successful. You've had some fantastic international tours, and you've managed to get some some international success with some athletes competing internationally. Yeah, uh, uh, JP, there's there's a few few born and bred South African players that would be playing outside the borders of of South Africa, and and I think those players are doing the country proud, and also their their local federation and even the clubs where they grew up 
yeah. they, they are doing it proud in, in terms of their performance. Um, Romeo, um, a memory for me a few years back, uh, coming out of my radio days, we did some um, visits to some of the clubs in, in, in Cape Town, and um, it, was, it was great to see the um, mini baseball, where you put the ball on the stick and the kids are able to throw the ball, uh, at least hit the ball off a stick. Is, is that still active? Is that still a way of developing junior, junior baseball? Yes, JP. Um, um, at under 10 level, you would find what, what is called as, as T-ball, where they, the T is actually what you refer to as the T stick ball, yes. that they hit, hit off from. We, we also have then a bit of a peewee baseball for clubs who have those, uh, those age players uh, available in their club themselves. So that would be just uh, uh, um, before under, under 10 level. And, and there are clubs that are quite successful. In, in terms of those that, that level of baseball. Um, it, it's also an opportunity to grow the sport because the older brother or sister might be participating in the club and be an established player in the club. Now there's a newborn in the family that's, that, that's able to, to start going to the field with the parents and find it interesting, this bat and ball that everybody's eating. Why can't I eat it? And the, the peewee baseball and, and the t-ball would then, would then assist in that. Now, tell me a little bit about baseball Cape Town specifically. How many clubs have we got? How can people join the club? Um, how is Cape Town baseball doing? Uh, JP, other than apart from, from the COVID-19 experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, baseball in Cape Town has been doing fairly well. Um, in the 2019-2020 season, we, we had about 20 clubs who had been participating in various levels. Obviously, not all of the clubs would have all of the teams in all of the leagues um, that Cape Town Baseball has been offering. Um, we have in, in the south uh, or in the deep south, we have a few clubs, including Fishuk. Um, in the north or the northern, the northern suburbs, we have clubs like Kales River. We have clubs like um, Buitasig, uh, Durbanville. We even have a club in, in Somerset West, so Pirates. Um, then there are one or two other clubs also in between. In Chucker Road, for example, uh, there would be a few clubs in Chucker Road, whether it be Athlone, whether it be VOB, whether it be Batswood. Um, then there's still Crusaders, there's Thistles, and Silvertree and a few others that I, that I have not mentioned. Um, like I said, not all of the clubs have participation in, in all of the leagues, whether it be the Pee Wee League, right up to the Major League, but, but that continues to be work in progress. I, I think... Um, we've all been striving as the new executive, while well, now not no no longer so new. We be, we were elected around the 18th of October 2020 to get baseball out there a bit more, and that's why I was grateful for this opportunity. Um, we've as a baseball federation, as the executive, we've looked a bit at how we were structured in order to gain quite a bit of effectiveness and efficiency. We've panel beat on one or two areas. Uh, we now have a component referred to as youth baseball where we have both the junior baseball, club junior baseball, and schools baseball in that specific portfolio. We've also, as an executive, we've also recently approved what is called the um, player development program. So those would be players who were selected in representative teams that we'd like to grow um, over the years. But we also have a futures program uh, that was also approved. And that looks at players who have potential, who may not have made the representative teams because there's only a limited number of spaces, but the players who have potential, the gems that we still need to polish and, and look out there for so that we can get to grow the sport and get, get our issues sorted in terms of on the field and also off the field. Because JP, just... you, would, you, would know, you would know in your sporting, in your sporting life, we, we talk about transformation, but transformation doesn't happen at, at district level. It happens at club level. It happens club at level. local level. 100%. If you don't get your structures and your programs sorted out at that level, how do you expect our national teams, our provincial teams, our district teams to perform? And transformation is not about the numbers only. It's about transforming the way we play the sport and that would then translate into our performance on, on the field. And the world is not perfect, and therefore I think there's always room for improvement in the national team, provincial teams, and district teams. All right, Romeo, you're giving me so much information of so many plans. 
that I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit lost. You, you're talking about future plans. Uh, you're talking about youth development, linking with the schools. We really are going to have to dig into this more um, in the future and get you back on the show to tell us more about it. But let's quickly um, wrap it up. Um, tell me about the club structures. If people want to join a club structure, how do you get started? Where do you sign up? And then how do you practice and how, you know, are there coaches that will sign you up and teach you how to play baseball? Yeah, JP, so, so the 20 clubs all have a presence in the social media sphere. So they would have either have a Facebook page, they would have email addresses, they would have um, websites. If, if, if prospective players are struggling, they can go to the, to the Cape Town Baseball Federation Facebook yeah. page. We'll be able to link them up with the club. And, and at clubs, um, we have the coaches um, that deals with specific technical issues, especially for the newbies, the starters. Yeah, yeah. Um, SA Baseball has also if recently... I go down to a club, if I go down to a club on a Tuesday night, will there be somebody who signed me up and say, welcome, come and join my club? There's always somebody to sign you up, uh, JP. There's always somebody to sign you up um, on, on, at the baseball field. It is just that I probably need to make clear our baseball season generally stretches from our league starts in October and it finishes in March. So we currently, and because it is a summer sport, we're currently in the winter sport, the winter code uh, period from April to the end of September. So it, it, is un, it is likely that when a new player or his parent comes to the field or goes to the field on Tuesday, there might be a winter code instead of the baseball people there. Um, but but that is that is something that if they go to our Facebook page, they'll be able to find some information. There. But you're giving me some good news because basically you're saying to me that now we have May, June, July, August and September to recruit more people to join more clubs. That, that's correct. That's correct, <laughs> JP. Because remember, the people who run baseball have now not closed the books. No, they nobody, are still actively no involved in the club business. 100%. No sport administrator ever closes the books. We know that as the sports administrators and volunteers, you guys are always working so hard behind the scenes. Um, Romeo, we're going to leave it at that. It's great to see that Cape Town Baseball is so active. Um, it's, a, it's really exciting for us to find out that there are clubs out there that are welcoming people to come and play baseball, which is such an exciting sport. Um, and we're looking forward to finding out more and, and telling more of the public out there to come and start playing baseball. Uh, thank you very much again, uh, JP, for inviting us. I, I, I think we, we would gladly accept your offer of returning as regularly as possible. We, we may want to send a few of uh, the other EXCO members to come and speak about their specific portfolios here, here on the show, because I think that then also grows the capacity within the EXCO for, for others also to, to, to speak a bit about their work. Fantastic stuff, Romeo. We look forward to having them. We'll leave it at that. We'll say to you, stay safe out there and we, uh, we'll keep following the progress. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You go well. There we go, folks. Romeo Adams, president of Cape Town Baseball. Uh, well, you can clearly see that there's going to be a lot of focus um, or awareness around baseball. And so stay tuned. We'll keep telling you what, it, what, what is happening and how you can sign up and get involved. And we'll keep highlighting um, a baseball in the Western Cape. Folks, uh, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we'll carry on talking about sport in the province. Back in a sec.